Hello, hope you're well. Welcome back to episode three of A Photographer's Journey. In episodes one and two, we took a look at the Ogwin Valley in Snowdonia and the Kinder Scout region of the Peak District. Today, we're taking a walk around another amazing area of the Peak District, starting at Higator and ending up in the depths of the wonderful Paddley Gorge. It's an area of true beauty and offers an abundance of walking and photography opportunities, all with very easy access. During the video, I'll be also printing a color image from the surprise view area. So let's get straight into this episode, starting at the highest point of the area, Higger Tor. Higger Tor is a gritstone tour that overlooks the Burbage Valley and Coal Walks to the south. Just before the village of Hathersage, take the turning to Ringing Low. Here the road winds up to a small car parking bay that can accommodate around 10 cars. From here, the easy walk to the top of Higator is only about 500 metres or so. The Burbage Brook runs from the north past Carl Walk and on to Padley, but it's views from the top of Higator that really catch the eye. To the west, we can see the Hope Valley, Mam Tor and Kinder Scout. To the east, we can see the Burbage South Edge and the Longshore Estate. The trek to Carl Walk is great if you've only got an hour or so and offers wonderful views back towards Higator. The purpose of the construction of Carl Walk is unclear. It's been described as being unlike any other found in Northern England. It's widely reported that it's an Iron Age hill fort, perhaps dating back from the 5th century BC. However, according to online sources, there is no evidence of settlements within the enclosure, so it's unlikely that the site was used or occupied as a fort. Maybe it was used as a place of refuge or for ceremonial purposes. Whatever the purpose, it dominates the landscape from Higator and can make a really interesting subject or as a feature to fill your mid-ground as the sun rises to the east. Higator works great as a sunrise or sunset location with some interesting foregrounds such as the well-known Kit Kat and Shelter Stones. There's always a photograph to be had from this amazing location. Higator is a stunning location that offers wonderful views and a great spot to grab a quick image or two. So this image that I'll be printing today is an image that I took during the heather season from last year from the Surprise View car park area. Now Surprise View sits on the A6187 and offers stunning views across the Hathersage area towards the Hope Valley. The car park offers the perfect starting point to explore the area with numerous walks and photographic opportunities in abundance. This image was taken from the wonderful stand of silver birch trees situated just beyond the car park. In August and September the hillsides take on a wonderful purple colour as the heather blooms. It's a wonderful sight to see and it's certainly worth a visit with your camera. There are many many short walks from this location that are worth a look. I often find myself walking up past Millstone Edge to the wonderful rock formations of Mother Cap. These make great photographs and from here Higator and Carl Walk come into view again. So you could continue to either of these and make a circular route following any one of the pathways. And it's impossible to lose yourself up here, it really is. Uh, you can always see the Surprise View car park, it's always in sight. And even if the clag descends, heading downhill will eventually take you back to the road and help you regain your bearings. The birch woodlands are wonderful in this area too, as are the views towards Hathersage. But if you really push for time and at the end of your day and you wish to get a quick sunset shot, my advice would be to take a look at Over Aula Tour, which sits just beneath the Surprise View car park. It's literally a stone's throw away and offers nice views across the moors to the woodlands of Bowl Hill and Padley Gorge with the rolling hillsides as a background. So let's take a look at the composition for the image I'm going to be printing today. So as always with a foggy morning you have to be quite quick, you have to work quite quickly don't you to make sure you can make the most of the image before it clears. And this morning was no exception and I could sense I only had a few minutes to work with the conditions I had. My thought process for this shot was to use the rock in the foreground to add a little more texture and detail to the composition. I tried to position the rock so it pointed through the centre of the image where the natural tunnel of birch trees falls. 
However, I couldn't quite make that work. So I had to settle on placing it in such a way that the eye is drawn towards the grouping of birch trees on the left-hand side with the hope that the eye then gets drawn through the center of the image. Capturing conditions such as this are quite rare. So I was really pleased to be able to combine the heather, the birch and the fog together to create this shot. Settings wise, the image was a little bit challenging as the leaves were moving from the easterly wind and I wanted to make sure they were frozen within the final shot. So to freeze that motion, I needed a shutter speed of about 1 50th of a second. And with the conditions being fairly dim, this meant I had to select a fairly wide aperture of f4 and boost my ISO to ISO 400. Now I'm always happy to boost my ISO if required and the f4 aperture was fine for this shot as at 18 millimeters, my depth of field was sufficient to get the foreground and the trees nice and sharp, allowing the background to fall out of focus as it receded into the mist. So in terms of the edit, things were quite simple, but I did have to tweak the white balance just a little bit. Now this is often the case when shooting heather or anything purple for that matter. Integrating something purple into your scene can often play havoc with the white balance, especially in auto. But as I shot this in RAW, I was easily able to correct my greens with just a few tweaks in Lightroom. Before we get this image ready for print, let's head further down the valley where the landscape changes completely and the wonders of Padley Gorge bring a wealth of opportunities to the photographer and walker alike. Padley Gorge is easily reached via a short walk from Surprise View Car Park. However, I prefer to park by the ice cream van parking, which is on the B6521 that leads to Grindleford Station. From here, you're right at the start of the gorge. With the bonus of free parking, it makes it the ideal entry point to the gorge. There are pathways on both sides of the gorge which have access to Burbage Brook as it meanders and babbles its way through this boulder-strewn valley. There's a couple of footbridges that allow crossings, meaning that you could take a circular route so both sides of the gorge can be explored in one trip. This location is perfect for photography any time of the year as it offers protection from the midday sun during the summer and shelter from the winds during the winter. But my absolute favorite time of the year to visit this area is during autumn when the leaves start to turn. The gorge is predominantly beech, oak and birch and they all offer their unique color palette. When the beach drop their leaves, the boulders become littered with orange foliage, making for wonderful waterfall shots as the brook flows through the rock gardens. At the start of the gorge, look out for the gnarly oak trees that have been twisted by the boulder laden moorland. They offer a plethora of compositions, but are difficult to shoot unless conditions are very, very atmospheric. To get the most from this area, a heavy fog is required to add separation and to simplify the scene. These can be found on the west bank. On the east side, a beech tree that grows around a selection of large boulders can be found. The gnarly roots make this tree incredibly interesting and the discarded millstone to the front can add an interesting foreground too. The best time to shoot this would be during autumn when maybe half the leaves have fallen. This means that muddy pathways will be covered with golden leaves while the tree itself retains its colour. Combining this with a misty morning with sunbeams coming from behind and it could make for an incredible shot indeed. I've tried to get this shot for a number of years but unfortunately the window is so slim that I've either been too early, too late or had no fog but I'll continue to give this location a try and I'm sure it'll come up trumps eventually. The gorge itself has steep sides which can become very slippery when wet, so care should be taken when making one's way down to the water. My advice would be to use the number of path access points along the way, which are less risky. During dry spells, it's fairly easy to walk up stretches of the gorge to find something new. There's so many compositions to be had from this location, but one of my favorites is down the far end near the last footbridge before Grindleford Station. Here, the brook takes a sharp turn to the west, and from this point, you have the gorge directly in front of you, allowing for many compositions to be had with little footwork. Throughout the year, the boulders at Padley can be extremely slippery, so take the necessary precautions before carrying your expensive gear across them. Aside from the wonderful scenery in the gorge, there's an abundance of wildlife too, such as woodpeckers, dippers, pied flycatchers, wood warblers, and redstarts. So, as with every image I make, 
I edit it for web viewing first and then I make some adjustments to the final print. To make the print look similar to how I'm seeing it on the screen, I like to make a few adjustments. And this is different with every print that I make, but usually it follows a similar pattern, to be honest. Generally, it's boosting the exposure a touch, then the contrast and saturation. Occasionally, I add in some sharpening. However, for this particular shot, I want to retain that lovely softness within the image. So I'm going to leave the sharpening as it is for this one. So let's go ahead and print this image out. And while that's printing, please feel free to take a look at some of the images I've had the pleasure of capturing in this area over the last few years. To the west of Padley Gorge, the woodland changes to predominantly silver birch. This area is known as Bowl Hill, a disused quarry. 120 years ago, this was a bustling industrial hub and completely different to how we find it today. The quarry brought in many new settlers to this area and it's thought that around 500 workers worked here during the early 1900s. Several men sadly lost their lives during the peak of that industrial period as heavy cranes moved tons of rock and debris from the site. Today the quarry is a wonderful location to explore and offers solitude and tranquility when other areas such as the gorge become busy. Look out for the abundance of millstones in this area too as they offer great subjects. Another great woodland area to explore is under the millstone edge. Both Bowl Hill and Millstone Edge are easily accessible from the Surprise View car park and make for fabulous short walks, perfect to visit with the camera. So here is the final print. I'm really happy with how this has turned out. It's really subtle and soft. It looks great on this textured fine art matte paper as well. At the end of this video, there is a selection of 10 images from the challenge that we do every month over on my online photography club. Last month's challenge was Woodland, and I have to say the entries were really, really strong. I know it was really difficult for the judges to choose the final 10. If you fancy joining in with next month's challenge, please be sure to check out the link above and down in the description. Anyway, I'll show those images at the end. If you enjoyed this video, guys, and you feel others might like it too, please be sure to share it wherever you can, as that really, really helps out. Before I go, I'd also just like to thank everyone for supporting this channel, whether that be by you know being a member of my photography club or by liking and subscribing to this channel. Without further ado, here are the 10 challenge winners. See you next week, guys. <laughs>